Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about some of the recent discoveries when it comes to the origin of our own galaxy. Some of the recent studies have focused on trying to figure out how exactly did the Milky Way come to be. In other words, what sort of galactic collisions occurred to create our own galaxy? Because today we know that this is how large galaxies form. They essentially form by absorbing and colliding with other smaller or relatively similar in size galaxies. And in the last 10 years or so, we've discovered quite a lot of different things about our own galaxy, realizing that it actually had at least a dozen or even more major collisions in the past. But this new study that you can also find in the description below discovered something else unusual, a collision that we never knew about. A galaxy is so massive and so influential that when it collided with our own Milky Way, it most likely reshaped it completely. And for this purpose, the scientists in this paper refer to this galaxy as Kraken. The gigantic octopus-like cephalopod that, according to the Scandinavian legends, lives somewhere off the coast of uh, Greenland. But let's talk a little bit more about what the scientists discovered and how they were able to do this, and also what this means for our own understanding of the Milky Way and its evolution. Now, naturally, because the Milky Way galaxy is so complex and because it contains billions and billions of different stars and also a lot of other things that move in all sorts of directions, trying to work out what collided with what and how this shape was created is obviously relatively difficult. For this, we have to use a lot of computers and actually a lot of supercomputers and a lot of very interesting models. And in order to figure all of this out, the scientists in this paper created a model known as E-Mosaics. It's essentially a model that uses a little bit of artificial intelligence and a little bit of supercomputers to try to work out what actually collided with what in order to create the most realistic representation of the Milky Way galaxy. And it looks like their model is actually extremely accurate. But in order to make this model work and in order to actually have any data to give to this model, the scientists couldn't just pick any random stars or they could actually even pick stars to begin with because there are just too many of them. There are most likely close to 400 billion stars in our own galaxy, and if we were to try to calculate the motion for all of these stars with a supercomputer, we would probably have to wait for a few billion years to finish these calculations. And so instead what they did was focus on one of the 150 or so globular clusters present in our galaxy which have all been quite well studied and have all been uh, documented, including their potential age, including their composition and potential number of stars in them. By observing other galaxies, like for example the Andromeda galaxy that seems to possess about 500 globular clusters, we realize that they do correlate with a lot of things happening in the galaxy. For example, the size of the supermassive black hole in the middle is often correlated with the number of clusters, the number of collisions happening in the past, and the overall size and the mass of the galaxy as well. And so the more globular clusters we find in a galaxy, the more collisions it probably had in the past. And generally because most of them contain approximately a million or so stars, and they also generally have stars that are of similar age and similar composition, and also because some of them even seem to share a similar orbit around the Milky Way galaxy, we can then estimate when these globular clusters were added to the Milky Way galaxy, and also their potential origin or even the original galaxy they came from. And so in some sense you can think of these clusters as basically like these bones, fossil bones, that we discover in the ground that we then use to reconstruct a dinosaur. Here we're using these uh, clusters to try to reconstruct the original galaxy they came from. And so essentially by running the artificial intelligence model they refer to as e-mosaics, they were able to discover these major events that happened in the past. All of them were based on the idea that Generally, a galaxy colliding with another galaxy is going to add a few of these globular clusters to Milky Way or to any other galaxy, and they'll most likely have very similar composition and also a relatively similar age because they were created around the same time. And interestingly, they'll also probably have similar orbits. And so we can sort of classify them depending on where they came from. And interestingly, one of the major discoveries here is that it seems that most of the major collisions, most of the biggest collisions that brought the biggest and the most massive clusters into the Milky Way, happened anywhere between 6 and 11 billion years ago. So basically before the Sun even existed, before Earth even came into existence as well. And so by using this simulation, they were able to quite uh, definitively identify at least 5 major collisions with really large galaxies 
some of which we've already identified in some of the previous studies. So in other words, this was a definitive confirmation of these events actually happening. For example, we've already talked about the collision with the so-called Gaia Enceladus or Gaia Sausage Galaxy that happened sometime about 10 billion years ago. This was originally discovered a few years ago and then confirmed by several different studies by studying the motions of stars and global clusters, which has now once again been confirmed in this study as well. We also know that another smaller galaxy, currently referred to as Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, has been circling the Milky Way for several billion years now and may have even been responsible for causing a lot of stars being formed due to various sort of disturbances it caused across the galaxy. And this Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy has also been sort of implicated in the creation of the solar system as well. But prior to this, there was probably another major collision with the so-called Sequoia Galaxy. And before that, probably around a billion years before that, there was another collision with something that eventually created the so-called Helmi Streams. All of these were very major galactic collisions, and the signs of these collisions are pretty much all over the place around the Milky Way Galaxy. But so far the biggest surprise from this study was that even before that there was another really major collision, most likely the first major collision that the Milky Way galaxy experienced. The scientists refer to this as the collision with the Kraken galaxy as I mentioned. The signs of which were left in the global clusters like this one right here known as NGC 6441. The scientists in the study identified over a dozen different global clusters that may have come from this galaxy and they all seem to possess relatively similar age, composition and orbits around the Milky Way, which of course suggested that they most likely came from the same object. And so these major collisions occurred at least five times, and each of them brought approximately 100 million new stars to the Milky Way galaxy. But their simulations also identified at least 15 smaller collisions that brought approximately 10 million stars each. So in other words, the simulation was able to show that not just the large collisions happened, but also identified several small collisions as well. But this also showed us that most of the major collisions and most of the major structuring of the galaxy happened in approximately 5 billion year time between 6 and 11 billion years ago. All of the other collisions after this were much smaller and didn't really change our galaxy that much. But what's really unusual in this discovery is that it seems that the Milky Way galaxy got most of its stars by actually creating them inside the galaxy itself. The majority of the stars we have today did not come from other galaxies, they actually were formed inside the Milky Way. Even though most of the gas probably came from other galaxies, the stars here were created on site. But also I guess the major discovery here is that there was a really major collision about 11 billion years ago that most likely defined the structure and of course the size and the mass of the early Milky Way galaxy. If it wasn't for the collision with the Kraken galaxy, our galaxy today would have looked completely different from what it's like today. But obviously the Milky Way is not finished colliding with things. In the next few billion years we're first going to be colliding with the nearby large and small Magellanic clouds. We're also going to be most likely absorbing the Triangulum Galaxy that's located not so far away from the Andromeda. And eventually the Andromeda Galaxy itself is going to combine with the Milky Way and all of the nearby dwarf galaxies are also going to merge all together. But all of this in billions and billions of years in the future. For now we're just trying to figure out what actually happened in the past and why our galaxy and galaxies nearby look the way they do. But for now that's all we discovered. It's pretty amazing that the scientists were able to identify a previously unknown collision that they refer to as the Kraken Galaxy Collision. But until we discover more about this galaxy or until we actually learn what else happened to the Milky Way, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.